So Nick Mendez uh, was 21 when his vehicle encountered an IED during his tour in Afghanistan as a sergeant back in 2009. That explosion ultimately left him paralyzed from the neck down. There's a new documentary out called American Veteran that follows Nick for the five years that follows that event. And joining us to talk a bit about her film is director Julie Cohen. Welcome to the show, Julie. Hi there. Great to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you here. We really appreciate you joining us today. Uh, so first, tell us a little bit about how you discovered Nick and what motivated you to help him tell his story. Well, in fact, I actually came across Nick uh, very much planning to do a technology story. Um, there's a guy in Phoenix named Brad Soden. There's a company called Tank Chair uh, that builds all kinds of very cool um different kinds of technologically advanced wheelchairs. Uh, the tank chair is uh, a wheelchair on tank treads. That's kind of an all-terrain vehicle. He also has something called the Mongo that goes super fast, like all this kind of jazzy technology that he's using for um, the disabled generally and uh, disabled vets in particular. And so I was thinking I was going to kind of follow that company and some of the veterans that they were making tank chairs for. And pretty early on in the process, we met uh, Sergeant Mendez, Nick Mendez, and his wife, well, his then girlfriend, Wendy. Um, and they had kind of such an amazing story and so many things going on in their lives, including uh, the love story, that I kind of decided just to focus on them and really make the story about them and their, their lives. Yeah, it really seems uh, based on what I've seen. Now, I haven't seen the film itself, but I, you know, did a lot of reading, uh, listened to some interviews, of course, with you, and, and found everything that I could find online to kind of uh, look into. It just really seems like Nick has incredible resolve uh, and it is very resourceful. Obviously, um, I, I guess tell us a little bit about uh, Nick's high tech uh, wheelchair, his setup that he uses. Well, he, the, the wheelchair he uses for, for day-to-day -day use, I mean, the, the cool thing about it is that it's mouth-operated. Um, he doesn't have the use of his arms and hands as well as uh, his legs, so he needs a wheelchair that doesn't roll in the traditional way, and it's called uh, Sip and Puff, mm -hmm. um, fairly common, actually, uh, technology for quadriplegics. Um, and basically, uh, you, there's a little straw that's attached, attached to the chair and he sucks in it to move forward and blows to, uh, go backwards. I think I have that right. Um, you can also, there's like a little touchpad screen on it that he uses to adjust, uh, how, how upright or how reclined he wants to be, um, at any moment. In fact, actually one of the first things I did when I met him and started filming was have him demonstrate for me how the thing works because kind of everything technological in his life, I found pretty interesting, just interesting to look at and interesting to remember um, both the challenges you you have to deal with going through going through life without the use of your arms and legs, but also kind of some of the abilities that people have come up with and the clever workarounds uh, to make life work without traditional body movement. Right. So, so one of the characters uh, that you have a cast of characters in the documentary. One is John Shoemaker, who's Nick's friend. Um, he's described as his go-to wheelchair repair man. So, is there a lot of this that is that they're doing themselves? That um, you know they're MacGyvering, or um, does this technology uh, something that that uh, like comes out of the box? A absolutely. Um, yes, you use the word MacGyver. Actually, Nick tends to use uh, the verb redneck uh, for that kind of thing. But yes, kind of putting things together with what's ever um, on, on hand is definitely um, is definitely part of uh, Nick's whole spirit. Uh, his friend John Schumacher, who um, was a Marine and also is a triple amputee um, himself, um, lost both his legs and part of one of his arms and a good, good deal of, of his hand, uh, but uh, is still uh, a very handy guy, actually. And at one point when we were filming, um, the straw, the sip and puff straw on Nick's wheelchair broke. So rather than going to the VA and dealing with whatever bureaucracy that would entail and waiting in a line for uh, for hours, he um, he just was going over to John's home anyway. And he just said to John, oh, you know, my, you know, do you have like some WD-40 maybe and duct tape and something? And, um, you know, the next thing you know, uh, John and his wife, Courtney, were messing around with um with the straw and uh, figured out, they actually took out a few of the links on the straw and they just figured out a way with some pliers um, and uh, some some super glue to put it all back together. 
Um, there's a lot that uh, Nick and Wendy do that is very much Jerry rigged type stuff. When I the, the first or second day I showed up and started filming with them, um, I was watching Nick play uh, the first person uh, shooter video games that he likes. He's really into the Fallout series. Um, and I came into the bedroom and Wendy had sort of a, like a breakfast in bed tray like in front of him. And he was both playing the video game with um, using a stylus in his mouth on a Sony PlayStation console that he was tipping back and forth. And next to him, they had a Tums bottle that they had masking taped an e-cigarette to so he could go back and forth and smoke his e-cig and play the Fallout series without having anyone, without having to call anyone in to bring him, you know, to give him a pump of cigarette or, and he never had to really, you know, he was just always going back and forth between um, having the stylus in his mouth and, and, and uh, smoking. And I was like, okay, this is, uh, this is, well, first of all, I mean, truthfully, I'm a filmmaker. So I was like, okay, this is a good scene. Right. Um, <laughs> right and, the note uh, but also like as a human being, I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. And it's really amazing that they, I was like, oh, how, you know, who, How'd you, you know, how'd you figure out how to use the console like that? Right. And Nick was like, I just kind of figured it out. And I was like, and what about that Tom's bottle? It's like, oh, Wendy was like, yeah, yeah, I figured it out. It'd be, you know, I didn't like to have to keep running back into the room every time that he wanted to take a drag of the e-cig. So we figured out how to sort of attach it to a uh, Tom's bottle. Man, that's so, so incredibly resourceful. And I have to imagine when you're, I mean, I can, I cannot imagine being in that position, but I have to guess that when you're in that position, any amount of autonomy that you can gain, no matter how you get there, uh, you know, improves your life and improves your resolve uh, and your, your outlook on things. I just don't understand how you play a modern video game with a single point of, of touch. You know, these controllers, they have... T buttons all over the place. I, I, yes. I don't understand how well, you can pull that off. You'd, you'd have to watch the scene, but also some some games work and some games don't. Yeah. Call of Duty doesn't really work for him. It has to be sort of like a one player at a time type game to make it work. And um, you know, he, he he was a big fan of video games before uh, going into the army, and said that he um, at first was really frustrated, like I'm not going to be able to play again. And then he found the Fallout series, uh, Fallout New Vegas, is what he was playing. Um, when I uh, met up with him and he realized that that actually was going to work really well. So. Wow. Um, and it's not just uh, video games. Also, he has another rig to go enjoy things like fishing. How does that, how does that work out? Um, yes. Well, you know, the amount of technology kind of high tech, medium tech and low tech that exists um, for quadriplegics is pretty imp impressive. And there are now both sip and puff fishing poles and even sip and puff gun mounts um, Nick for a fishing trip that he was doing with a, a group that took him out on a, tr a trip called the Foundation for Exceptional Warriors helped arrange for him to get a, uh, a sip and puff fishing reel where basically works fairly similar to, to his chair. It's sort of like a, the po fishing pole was on a stand and there was a straw attached that he would use to suck in to move the reel in one direction and then blow to move it in the, in the, you know, to reel it back in. Um, wow. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, what, what's something that you walked away from in this experience that you didn't know going in? I mean, this was a five year, at least I'm, I'm, I'm imagining at, at the very minimum, it was five years of following Nick in his life. What, what did you learn in that time that you didn't actually know going into the experience? Yeah. Well, we actually follow, we actually, um, we tell his story for five years, but we, right. but I was working on it for about two and a half years. We sort of met up with him, um, uh, partway through. Um, you know, I would say the overall lesson to me was I went into this thinking about with the assumption that the most notable thing about being a quadriplegic veteran or maybe just a quadriplegic at all would be all the things you can't do. Um, and what I learned from Nick and Wendy and John and the Foundation for Exceptional Warriors and all the people that they're kind of dealing with is like the multitude of things that you can do unexpectedly. Um, and I, I'd add, you know, that like falling in love and even having sex fell into those categories of things that I thought wouldn't be, you wouldn't do, but actually you can do. So, uh, you know, if you wanted to take the most optimistic message. And I think there really is an optimistic message like that, that that's a lesson 
that's a lesson in in their experience and just a life lesson maybe in life in general like maybe maybe you can do more than you might expect and yeah. that you know technology has its its huge advantages and its and its horrors as i'm sure you you guys explore both all the time but like it's really amazing what technology can do and especially kind of technology combined with motivation and cleverness of a couple like Nick and Wendy. For sure. Yeah. I mean, that's the, the story. Uh, what caught me when I uh, heard uh, you talking about the film was the story of Wendy, his wife who met him after his accident. And that that's a big part of the film also that their, their love story. Uh, can you talk a little yeah. bit about that? Sure. Um, you know, I love love stories. I kind of think every every documentary, every film, to some extent, should be both a comedy and a love story. Um, when you hear words like, you know, quadriplegic veteran blown up by an IED in Afghanistan, maybe you don't think about romance and and comedy, but uh, there are plenty of both in, in Nick's life. Um, and basically, the love story is that when he was in uh, the VA hospital in Long Beach, and he was there for qu quite a period of, of time, about six months. Um, he met a medical caregiver named Wendy, uh, who was applying to be his home health nurse after he was released from the hospital. Um, it turned out that um, the agency that she worked for wouldn't, uh, their insurance didn't cover active duty military, which he still was at that point. So she couldn't be his nurse. And um, unbelievably, even though working with quadriplegics and, and paraplegics was what she was doing full time, she really had been, uh, she, she'd really been kind of charmed by, by Nick when she met him in, in the hospital. And also um, her dad served in Vietnam and she kind of had a, an affinity for military guys and also just a recollection from her dad's bad experience of you know, military guys being treated not so well when they came back home, like she wanted to show some care to, to someone and like thought this is a nice guy. So she basically, even though she wasn't going to be working with him professionally, she just called up his doctors and nurses and said, hey, would it be OK if I just stopped by to visit him? And she started visiting him in the hospital um, at first occasionally and then really regularly. And they were just hanging out and watching movies and uh, doing you know, normal stuff you might do hanging out with someone and started to really have feelings for each other when Nick was released uh, from the hospital and went to live with his dad um, for uh, for a year or so. She kept coming over and kept visiting and everyone was kind of like, even Nick was like, what, you know, what's this about? What's she, what's her game here? What's she, what's she up to? And it, it just, they, they just ended up finding this real bond and shared sense of humor. He, Nick is a really, really fun guy. So she was just having fun hanging out with him. And ultimately, uh, they fell in love and moved in together. And, um, you know, as part of the story that, that you'll see in the film, they actually uh, got married and um, have been have been married for about a year and a half now living, uh, speaking of, in, of technology, in an incredibly cool very technologically advanced um, all access home that's been built for them by a group called Homes for Our Troops that makes, uh, you know, f fully accessible kind of customized mortgage free homes for Iraq and Afghanistan vets. They've made about 250 so far. Wow. Uh, so in the course of our filming, they were actually they were having that they were designing this house and having it constructed um, in a place called Murrieta, California, sort of. Um, I don't know how to buy it. I think you guys are on the West. It's some, kind of somewhere between LA and Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. um, like with um, all kinds of, there's the lift device that helps Nick get out of bed, helps Wendy help Nick get out of bed and can then like sort of move him around more than what he had in his previous home and just all, uh, automatically opening doors so he doesn't need, like if someone else isn't around, he can still um, using you know, using technology that doesn't need him to use his hands, he can still get the doors to open so he can go inside and outside his own home without somebody having to help him, which is just a huge, uh, you know, a huge lifestyle improvement. Um, you know, I think the most frustrating thing uh, being in Nick's position is to have to rely on other people for so many parts of day-to-day -day life. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and anything, like I said, anything that you can do to uh, capture a little bit of that for yourself uh, has to be very liberating. So it looks like a fantastic documentary. Um, where can people find it? Because I know it's kind of going, kind of taking it around on a tour right now. Uh, how right. can people it's catch Disney. 
it's just beginning its uh, its life on tour. Um, and the way to check it out is just um, the film's website, uh, AmericanVeteranMovie.com. Uh, we'll give information on screenings, which are happening right now. And when it becomes available uh, digitally, which it will probably at the end of the year, then there's going to be links so that you can see it that way. But hopefully you'll be able to see it uh near people will be able to see it near them and uh, as as we have screening dates we're going to be putting them up on the website and we're uh psyched about it that's awesome super exciting uh julie cohen director of american veteran at americanveteranmovie.com really appreciate you taking time out today to talk to us about this thanks so much it was really fun thank you thanks, have a julie. great night